Hey guys, come on, one more hand, come on, Hall of Famer. Thank you, Hall thank of you Famer, guys. Hall of Famer, Marcus Allen. What a nice re reception, I appreciate it very much. Super Bowl winner, come on, what, what's, what's your favorite introduction? When someone says, so-and-so, Marcus Allen, what do you like the best? Icon, hmm. legend? I, I mean, listen here, there's, there's uh, I'm lucky enough to have credentials, you know what I mean? So, um, you know, right now, a dad is the best thing. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. dad, just dad is good. So I, I got a three-year-old. Well, he's going to be three in, in January. So I got a two-year-old. I had a late start, guys, but it's like <laughs> my first child, and, and I love being a father. So That's amazing. Is he going to play uh, football? Uh, like his whatever dad, he or? wants to do, um, you know, hopefully, um, you know, whatever he decides to do, I'm, I'm, I'm going to support him 100%, but I'm not going to tell him not to do something because I end up playing, I don't know if you guys know this, I played 16 years longer than anybody in the history um, of the game at my position, so, and I, I'm... Relatively, yeah, a hand for uh, that, please. Yes. Relatively unscathed. I got a few injuries here and there, but um, uh, you know, I, I played a game and I didn't get it hurt, so it's you know, it would be difficult for me to, to tell him don't play this game. So. And uh, obviously, there's an interesting game going on tonight, Thursday night. It's uh, Raiders Chiefs. I mean, who do you got yes. for that? Uh, you well, played I'm, for both teams. I'm torn. People, I'm yeah? torn, guys. I'm. Uh, <sighs> People always ask me to separate uh, or make it, you know, uh, they want me to decide, who, you know, they want me to pick a side, and I never will because I embraced my entire career, mm. all 16 years of it. So it's almost like a child. They want me to choose one child over another, and I won't do that. I love uh, both teams, and, you know, tonight um, I'm going to sit down and watch the game. Uh, I'll be at the edge of my seat, and I anticipate a great game. And for the first time in a long time, uh, the Raiders are relevant again. Yeah. Um, and I always think the league is better when the Raiders are a part of the playoff picture, and now they're playing really well. And Kansas City's had success. They were um, had a great season last year, and they've continued. Uh, they beat the Raiders earlier this year, and now uh, the Raiders are going to Kansas City. Uh, and that's a tough place to play. Believe me, I know it. It's a tough place to play. So we're going to see how far the Raiders have come. And... Um, uh, I love watching them. I think uh, they, I think they're great. I think both teams are great. So I'm gonna, you know, be like you guys, sit at the edge of my seat, and 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 hopefully there's going to be a great game because I think the playoffs begin tonight. Yeah, there we go. Yes, nobody's waiting for the end of the uh, the year to be, uh, for playoffs to begin. They begin tonight for these two teams. I'm sure you get people coming up to you from Raider Nation all the time. I mean, what's the response? People send you drinks. What do you like as far as a, a hello from a fan? Uh, listen here, just as long as you're nice, uh, you know, it's fine. You know, some uh, some fans are a little bit uh, over eager, and you know, they like to put their hands on you and stuff like that. And I like to <laughs> say, don't do that. But anyway, it's um, it's when people are nice, it really doesn't matter. I love football fans, regardless if you're a Raider fan or a Chief fan. The fact that you like football uh, is good enough for me. So. And you help those guys get a get a ring, you know. You help those guys win a Super Bowl. So, yeah, what does it, that it, feel like? It, it seems like so long ago. And to yeah. think that the Raiders have only been back once, and the last time they won is when we played. Uh, I mean, you want better for that organization. Uh, they got a lot of things that uh, uh, to be thrilled about. Uh, my biggest concern is I want the Raiders to get a stadium for their fans. They deserve a stadium. They're playing guys in a relic. I mean, I think, I'm not quite sure whether it was the San Diego Stadium or uh, the Oakland um, Coliseum, uh, respectively. I think they were either 67 or 64. So they're playing in a stadium that was built in the 60s. That's crazy. And their fans deserve better. Um, and then you, you know, for example, you know, to contrast that with um, Jerry's World. And, 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 and ha have you guys gone to the stadium down there? There Guys, go, it, is, it is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, the fan experience is just off the charts. I mean, it is, you know, it, it's something really to behold. And um, if there's one uh, place, uh, really San Diego as well, but if there's one place that deserves a great stadium because of the fans that have been great, it's Oakland. So, Absolutely. I can yeah. agree with that. And, uh, you know, speaking about the ring that you helped those guys win, we have one of these rings right here with Kay Jewelers. And you're, you're here for a partnership that they're doing with St. Jude's, a uh, partnership they've been doing for about 18 years now, right? Yes, guys. Um, this is, uh, this, obviously, can you guys see this thing? It's pretty large. It's pretty impressive. You guys can yes, get close on this. Yes, it's um, designed by Kay Jewelers. They are, are our official jewelry uh, store for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Uh, and they have a great campaign. This is their 100th uh, anniversary, guys. And for the last 18 years, they have partnered with St. Jude 
Children's Research Hospital, and if you uh, if your head hasn't been in the in the ground, guys, I mean, I think everybody should aware of what uh, St. Jude's is, uh, means to family and kids and stuff, and and what they do. Uh, I mean, financially, uh, you, you don't have to pay, you know, a bill. You don't have to do anything. They take care of everything. So, um, I think they've donated close to fifty-three million dollars. I mean, that's that's a commitment, guys. I mean, you can say a lot of things. That's putting uh, your money where your mouth is, guys. And um, I really appreciate it. Yeah, pre put a hand for that, absolutely. Because, you know, you like to align yourself with people that, you know, I always say this, you're rich by what you give and you're poor by what you keep. Mm. And so you always want to associate yourself with people who believe uh, that, who uh, I call it like being synchronized swimmers in that regard. So, um, and they had this, this wonderful uh, campaign, guys. Uh, <clears throat> A great way for you to get involved, uh, mm -hmm. the fans to get involved, and, and people who support, uh, whether it's football or St. Jude, um, singing the jingle. Every kiss begins with K. Everybody knows the jingle, right? Right. right. Here we go. Let me try. Every kiss begins with K. You're good, dude. Yeah, That's there we go. Good. Yeah, You're exactly. Good. All right. I'm, I'm impressed, man. Most people are, <laughs> listen to there. guys, out today, I mean, we had Rich Eisen sing. I mean, we've had... Uh, Keyshawn Johnson, who doesn't, you know, he doesn't do anything. He sung. I mean, so, I mean, he, it, it, it was great. We've had so much participation. Matter of fact, I listened to a video earlier, um, and I said, you know, guys, uh, there are bound to be some talent out there, and I, and I want first dibs. Yeah. I will be the manager, the person that actually sings it well, and we have somebody that can have a career back there, so. You could be the usher to somebody's we, Bieber right now, actually, yeah, there with so, this competition. <laughs> so it's been, it's been fun so far. Uh, I've been doing it since this morning. Uh, I got up at 4 a.m., and so I got an early start, but uh, it's a great opportunity, and, and when you're enthused to help others, uh, it, it becomes fun. It's, it hasn't been work today. The group that I've been with have been fantastic, so. I've had fun. So you guys know about um, if you uh, post a video on uh, Facebook, or you guys know all about that stuff. So there you go. Facebook and Twitter. Yeah, I mean, Twitter. I feel like a lot of people use. We, we, yeah. yeah, we want you guys to post something. There we go. All right. As a matter of fact, you guys can come up here and sing with me if you want to. There we go. <laughs> At the end, we'll get everybody up here and we'll have a little chorus, right? There we go. And I want you guys to sing with me because we just had we showed a classroom, right? It was a, mm. a, a elementary school class. They sounded great. They did. They sounded great. It was like a gospel choir. So you guys, <laughs> come on. All right. It's such a great you know, partnership because I feel like a lot of people are out there. We all use social media, obviously. Um, and it, usually it's for no purpose. It's for no cause. Right. You just want to share your feelings. This is like actual money that is going to an incredible yes. organization like St. Jude's, which is, like you said, it's not throwing any families a bill, which is like a... a it's a traumatic thing to deal with what these families are dealing with. And I can't, I can't yeah. imagine uh, because it would devastate most families, even on an emotional level, but then financially. So, um, you know, every video that uh, is posted out there, guys, on Facebook or Twitter, uh, they're donating $100, um, up to $50,000 to St. Jude. So I think it's a, it's a great campaign. I'm, I'm glad to be a part of it. Uh, and I hope they do more of these because they're so, uh, there's been such great participation. And I think it's... Um, we, you know what we recognize, there's a lot of people that uh, like to give back and want to get involved and stuff, and this has been a great platform to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Now, getting back to the ring, you know, you have, you have one of those. I mean, is, yeah. what is it like? Do you... I, have, I actually have a lot of rings. I mean, there's, uh, there's nothing better than my K ring here. <laughs> but I was, I've been fortunate, guys. I have, a, um, I have a Rose Bowl ring. Yeah. I have a national championship ring. I have a uh, college football Hall of Fame ring. I have a... NFL Hall of Fame ring, and I have a Super Bowl ring. So, the best yeah, one, obviously, is the the K Jeweler ring. Of course, of course. I mean, but you know, do you ever wear it out? Is it something that you would feel uncomfortable wearing out? I wonder that with players. I know no, some I, do. I, I joke around a lot, guys, and I said I like to fly below on the radar screen and stuff because I, I always say this is my credentials. People <laughs> recognize that, so I try to like. Um, you know, try to be as low key as possible. Yeah, I don't wear that much jewelry. So, do you have a couple of friends in the from the the league that do wear those? Oh, you I give got them a little... guys that wear two and three rings at the same time and stuff. <laughs> it's like walking around with a jersey. They like look at me, and I don't I don't want to be that guy. So, I'm but sure it's great. Yeah. They take pride in it. So you know that's why there's menus. Yeah, I mean, you know, speaking of taking pride, I mean, you have some incredible runs down your career. I mean. 
your highlight reels are all over the internet on YouTube, that sort of thing. Do you ever go back and look? I mean, that 74-yard run that you did uh, on that game, that was a world record for a long time. Well, on occasion, guys, I try to show my son. I mean, there's such, I'm mean, honestly, there's such separation, you know. He's only two. Mm. He's never, he'll, you know, he wasn't fortunate to see me play, so I have to show him what his dad does. Now, there are, are certain trophies that are on the mantle that he says, Dad, Dad, Dad. So, I mean, he's starting to sort of associate uh, uh, some of the things that I did uh, with some of the things that I uh, have at home and stuff, and that's really nice, but um, I, I never wanted to have an I love me room, yeah. but now that I, no, seriously, I mean, everybody sort of does, but uh, mm. now that my, uh, and, and I never really, um, really started keeping things, but now that I have a son, I want to keep everything, and then now I start asking for jerseys for some of my friends, and I never asked them before, but everything is for my son, like the Heisman Trophy and everything else, it's all his. Mm. So that's, that's, my, uh, that's the way I see it, though. It belongs to him now. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of players out there who, you know, haven't really, don't stay involved with the league as much as you have. You've been around, obviously. You've been seeing the new guys come up, sort of seeing them live that lifestyle. It's, it's definitely changed a little bit. What have you noticed as far as the league and how it's well, changed? Well, I, I see myself as one of the ambassadors. You know, I have, I've always taken pride in um, uh, the way I play the game and then I try to conduct myself off the field and, and try to represent the league as, uh, as, as much as possible. Uh, we have some great, talented uh, young men. Um, that are playing today. Um, the game is exciting. I mean, we were just talking about the Dallas Cowboys and and how Ezekiel's playing and and uh, how Dax, the quarterback's playing. I mean, it's 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 really exciting. And even talking about the Raiders, we talk about uh, Carr. Um, they've done an excellent job, and they got Cooper. And they got you know Khalil Mack. They got all these guys that are just. Um, Almost, they're like profe they're, and, and they're professionals too. They're doing all the right things. Um, uh, it's great to see. It's great to see them focus and, and use their energy, and then at the same time use their platform to do other things uh, like I'm doing today. So, yeah, absolutely. And um, there's a lot of those guys doing that sort of thing, but there's obviously another element to the to the league right now. I mean, there's a creation of all these networks. TMZ Sports exists now. It's it's a crazy thing where everybody wants to know. What's going on with these players outside of their life? I mean, is, how does that feel for you as a change? Uh, well, uh, listen, I, I, I've always uh, thought they were two lives. There was a public and a private life and stuff. And, and I, not, I never tried to bring football home. Um, once I got home, I tried to be, you know, uh, I, I, I tried to leave that outside. Um, and uh, I think it's important to, to, to have some things private. I think it's important to have a private life. I don't necessarily, um, I, I'm one of those people who believe a, a whale doesn't get harpooned until he comes up and blows, right? So um, I believe in flying below the radar screen. But then again, as I said before, that's why there's menus, guys. Uh, people have choices out there. They can do whatever they want to do. Um, they can, you know, um, certainly do things that I wouldn't do. They, they can wear certain things that I wouldn't wear. But uh, you don't want sameness. Uh, you want a, a variety out there. And, 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 and guys, uh, take full advantage of uh, the platforms uh, that they have and the social medias uh, to get um, either themselves out there or a cause out there. Um, so, I mean, that's obviously what you're supposed to do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, you know, speaking a little bit about those younger players, you talked about some of the positions and some of the players that you're you're interested in. Are there any running backs out there that are really inspiring you right now? That are really well, like Murray the game? from from the uh, from um, the Raiders. I like. Um, Le'Veon Bell from, uh, and and I and I guess I take and I mentioned two guys, the guys that were actually tall. And and, and most people wouldn't understand this. It is harder being a tall running back. Mm. Uh, it's easy for Emmitt Smith and uh, and Barry Sanders, mm. uh, because they were you know five nine, five nine and a half, five ten at the most. Um, and when their offensive lineman stands up, uh, and if they're behind him, you can't see them. And it's, it's, that's, that's an advantage. Mm. But if you're tall, if you're 6'3", 6'2", 6'2 and a half or 6'4", uh, you're not hiding from anybody. <laughs> and you have to have special, and you have more body to hit. Mm. So you have to have the special skill in order to defeat people. You got to have, and if you look at Le'Veon Bell, he's a tall running back. 
and he makes a lot of people miss, which is harder to do the taller you get. So I have a special affinity to those guys because uh, we nobody knows this, but we put ourselves in a category. We, we say there's short backs and then there's tall backs, and all the tall backs sort of stick together. Right. Uh, Eric Dickerson, uh, Eddie George, all those guys, they're tall, big guys. Uh, and then you have the Barry Sanders and, and, and Emmett Smith and Tony Dorsett's and those kind of guys, and they're, and they're short. And um, we always said it was easier because they're closer to the ground, too. The taller you are, you know, if you want to get low, it's even more difficult. Mm. So it, it requires a lot more work and a special skill to being tall. Yeah. And, you know, talking about your team again, I mean, how, do you guys stay in touch? Do you stay in touch with the guys that you used to play with in Raiders? Uh, and yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, Tim Brown's one of my best friends. Mike Haynes is one of my best friends. Guys, um, you know, what we do now is I don't go out. I don't party and stuff, guys. Uh, I play golf. <laughs> and uh, I always tell people, like, that's our locker room. <laughs> That's our locker room, you know. It's Looking pretty sharp in that it, golf polo right now. I, yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, it looks I said, natural respect, on you. Uh, you know, unlike women, guys don't say, hey, let's go shopping. We don't do that. We don't go say, uh, let's go to the spa. Guys don't do that, right? They don't, we don't say, let's go coffee clutching, right? We say, let's go golf. And we hang out uh, for four hours, and we talk about life. I mean, we compete, we joke, we laugh, we bet. But a lot of times we talk about life out there, you know, um, things that are going on in our life and stuff like that. For, so for guys for four hours to hang out to, and, and to sort of connect on another level and stuff, it, it, it's pretty good. And give us like a taste of who the guys that you're playing with. I think Jerry Rice. I mean, you're playing uh, with some yeah, you know, well, a little bit. Yeah. I played several tournaments with, um, with Jerry and stuff. But I, 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 you know, Eric Dickerson, we've played like three times a week for the last I don't know how many years. And I've gotten to know Eric so well and stuff. And I, I, I don't know if you guys have been knowing what's going on with Eric Dickerson and the, and the Rams. Um, I know one thing. When Eric uh, says he's not going to do something, I guess he told uh, as long as Jeff Fisher is on the sidelines, he will never go to a Ram game again. And when he says that, he means it. So uh, that is he will not be at a game, I can guarantee A lot of that. fans are upset about that, Jeff Fisher, right it, now, obviously. It's a weird What's situation. your read on that? He yeah. is, he's one of the faces of the Rams organization. He's one of the greatest players that ever, uh, you know, put on a uniform for the Rams. And for it to get to that level, I mean, I understand criticism, and especially with the journalist. Uh, journalists. Uh, as a journalist, you, you, you can't, you got to do your job. As much as you want to, obviously, um, you know, uh, protect your team at times, if, if, in order to be true to your profession, in order to be taken seriously, sometimes you got to be critical. And apparently, I guess he's been critical, and they haven't liked it. And as a result, uh, that's an unfortunate thing has happened. So. Yeah, I mean, I think you you also ha you've been an analyst and so of that on the games. I mean, you have a you have an interesting perspective I, having I, played. I it, could you know? never so, be, yeah. I, see, I was never critical to people. I can't. Yeah. I I always had like a soft spot for because I know how hard it is, and mm -hmm. nobody wants to play poorly. Everybody's trying their hardest, um, and people are dedicated out there. And then they got families they got to take care of and stuff. And I was never one of those guys that can just say, you know, I always say my my I always called what I I would say diplomacy is what I use. Mm. And my uh, definition of diplomacy is saying the nastiest thing in the nicest way. <laughs> so I try to always say you know frame things in a very nice way, even if it was negative. But instead of just coming out saying something that was really sort of, uh, you know. Um, yeah, that would get everybody's attention. I would. I, it's just not me. I mean, is that something that you've sort of seen a correlation between the guys that used to play there, now the analysts, and now there's just straight up guys who've been, you know, you know, uh, reading yeah. games. There, there are some life. players yeah. that, uh, you know, that hate former players based on some of the, the, you know, some of the things that they've said and stuff. And I can understand it. That's uh, that's life. Uh, you don't always agree with what people have to say, but again, they have to be true to to their professions and have to be. It, you know, Eric said something really uh, poignant. I mean, he, listen here. If he were to say the Rams aren't playing well mm. right now, I mean, that's been pretty obvious. If he were to candy coat it, people would say, what the hell is wrong with Eric Dickerson? He must be crazy because he's not seeing what I'm seeing. So, I mean, uh, that's the other side of it. So you got to be honest and upfront. So. Yeah. I mean, what do you? What's your read on you know having worked in Los Angeles as a Raider? I mean, what what's your read on what's going on with LA right now as far as their football teams and everything? Well, LA loves a winner. Um, 
I, you know, the, the, I was hoping, first of all, I wanted Oakland to stay in Oakland. And if they weren't in Oakland, I wanted them to be in Los Angeles. I don't know if many of you know this, but I was the, the original dra draft choice of the Los Angeles Raiders, the first person ever chosen by the LA Raiders. So my experience with the Raiders is in Los Angeles, and that was a great experience. Uh, but growing up, uh, I knew the history of Oakland, and to me, uh, it's, a, it's as important to the Bay Area as the Packers are to Green Bay. I mean, those people live and die, the Raiders up there. It means so much more to them than um, what a lot of people realize. And I, I just hope that the politicians um, will make it a business-friendly environment that somebody can come in and do the right thing because there are people that want to put in a new stadium. Uh, for example, there's Ronnie Lott, former player who wants to uh, – he has some big plans, and hopefully those plans will be worked out, but we have to wait and see. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I guess we have some questions of the audience, and feel free to sing the K Jewelers uh, theme Never song and embarrass yourself like I did. Please, that would be great. Hi, Mark Zellin. Thank you for being here. So uh, what, what have you learned from uh, the, uh, one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time that you played with, uh, Joe Montana? Playing with Joe, uh, golly. Uh, have, have you guys ever seen the movie Cool Hand Luke? I mean, that's how Joe was. He was Paul Newman in the huddle. <laughs> no, seriously, he was as smooth and so calm under pressure. You guys obviously remember, uh, I think it was the Super Bowl against uh, the 49ers when he said, hey, there goes John Candy. Well, that was on that last drive that they had to win the game, and Joe was always like that. When I was in the huddle with him, um, there was a confidence over the entire team they knew that we were in good hands. And there was never any panic. He didn't show panic. He didn't show it facially. He didn't show it in his play, nothing. He was always as, as, as cool as you can possibly get. And it's great playing with somebody like that. And then the other part of that is that for some reason, I mean, we were like, um, it was, you know, we had mental telepathy. I mean, I knew exactly what he was thinking. I mean, there was one time he threw me a pass and he was never looking at me. He just knew where I was. And I wish I would have played with him early in his career and stuff. I only played a couple of years with him. Uh, we lost the uh, AFC Championship game to the Buffalo Bills. And um, we actually had moved the ball down the field and there was an interception that deflected off one of uh, our fullback. Uh, and they intercepted it uh, as we were trying to go in to score. Um, so we, we had some momentum, and then he got knocked out. Um, I think he got hit, and the back of his head hit the, uh, the turf. And it was over after that because the, the backup came in and didn't, didn't have the same confidence and stuff like that. But Joe was so great to play with. Um, I, I'll use another actor, uh, Robert Redford in The Natural. Well, Joe was a natural. He was great. He was great to play with. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. Um, so next question is right there. Yeah. Um, so I'll spare you singing the jingle, but I'd be remiss not to mention that K Jewelers just aired a commercial during the Rockefeller tree lighting ceremony, which featured myself proposing to my now fiance. So a big fan of K Jewelers. There we go. Oh, Shout out. I mean, Shout out hey. Jewelers. Did we, did we get that? There's two celebrities yeah. here. There we go. Yeah, yeah. It's on YouTube. Oh, that. good. That's All right. Great. I just wanted to make sure because that's... Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Congratulations thank as you, well. Sir. And those are the moments that last, man. Those are... Yeah. Congratulations. Oh, yeah. That's Absolutely. awesome, man. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's a pleasure to have you here. Glad to have you partnered up with Kay as well. And also, you're right. The playoffs do start tonight as far as my fantasy football league is concerned. <laughs> uh, so we're looking for some big so numbers. How, how have you been doing? I'm in the playoffs. Oh, good. Uh, I'm in the That's playoffs. good, then. So we, we need maybe Murray. You should, maybe you should be a real GM. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see what uh, life Place has Jeff Fisher. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, actually, though, my question. Um, you mentioned you recently started having kids. I had my first. Okay. I, wait, I waited a long time, yes. Right. And so um, you also mentioned, which I didn't know, that you didn't take a, a lot of injuries during your career, um, which obviously as a running back, that's... You, you take a lot of hits. Yes. Um, I'm curious to know if you purposely waited to start having kids to maybe focus on your career and that helped you dial in and have such a successful... Um, no. Uh, it just, you know, I met the right person. I waited for the right person. And, um, um, but, I mean, 
we we're lucky though. I mean, football players, at least I'd like to think we are, and 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 in that the sport, at least that we have, uh, you're home more than any other sport. You know, you're home um, throughout the week, and you may leave on the weekend uh, to play. So you're home, you know, eight out of the 16 games and stuff like that. I can't imagine trying to be a parent and you play baseball and you're gone for 82 games and you're, you know, and and you play basketball and you're going for 40-something games and stuff like that. Um, I, to me, it's like it's being present. And, and now, like, the time is actually perfect because I really don't want to go anywhere. I, I want to be there. I want to make sure, you know, because my dad's 82, and I look back and reflect on my life. Um, my father was, I mean, the first person to buy me cleats. You know, he was my, you know, either an assistant coach. Um, he was my baseball coach. Uh, and I only had, you know, had four brothers, too, and he was, you know, back and forth. He showed no partiality. My mother was a team mother, so they were always present. So I'm a product of somebody that was always there. And even as my, um, I ended up going to USC, it's like I knew where my parents were sitting every game. I knew they were sitting at the Raider game. So before the game started, all I did was look up there, and I was ready to go. So I know the importance of a parent being there. So um, uh, no, it just happened that way, and I'm glad it happened that way and stuff because I did focus um, on my career. I loved it. Uh, it was my it was my baby. Uh, I tried to treat it with velvet gloves. You know, I, I tried to take care of my career. I figured if I took care of that, I didn't have to worry about um, life after. Um, and the other thing, but I always but I always thought this was important though because. Ronnie Lott, and I've always said this, because he was my roommate in college. I don't know if you knew this. And Ronnie and I always said, football is what we did. It's not who we are. And we always felt the transition would be much easier if you were uh, something else other than just a football player. So we always try to develop ourselves in other areas and stuff. And um, so I believe that, um, you know, that's what I did. I loved it. But I was more than just that, so. This question, and congratulations again. Okay. Yeah. One last question right there. Yeah. That's pretty romantic, <laughs> man. Come on. One last question right there. Hey, Marcus. Um, so I was wondering about your take on uh, some of the injuries that a lot of football players sustain. Um, do, the, do you feel like uh, the safety measures have gotten better while you were playing and since then, since <sighs> you've been playing? Oh, yes. I mean, when you think about it, guys, I remember playing um, – Oh, gosh. When I started uh, 10 years old, I mean, the helmets were really just suspension helmets. They had a little bit of leather and, or, or, um, uh, and, and, and a little pad that, that, you know, that, you know, that protects you through the top of the head. And then over the, uh, <clears throat> the years, they evolved and they had the little cushion foams inside to protect your head. And now, they're, they, I mean, they're almost state of the art, some of the things that they're trying to create uh, helmets that give um, almost like shock absorbers and stuff like that. So they're trying everything possible to, uh, to protect the players. And, and I certainly do appreciate that because uh, it is difficult seeing uh, guys that have experienced um, head trauma. Let me give you an example, guys. I played um, since I was 10 years, 10 years old, and I only suffered two concussions. Um, one in college where I actually was running and um, ended up jumping over somebody and, and flipping and landing on the back of my head and, and got knocked out. And I remember going to the sidelines, um, getting lifted up, and, and, and I asked them as I was sitting on the bench, what was I doing? And they said, all you were doing was laughing the entire time, <laughs> right? So I go uh, to the pros later uh, and play uh, the Seattle Seahawks in a playoff game. Um, and I remember going to cut a guy, and I got kicked in the head. And um, I remember, you know, uh, trying to get up. And that's one thing I always told my mother. I said, Mom, don't ever, don't worry. I'll always get up. So I staggered, uh, you know, tried to stand it up, and they, 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 they got me, and, and I sat back down. They gave me some smelling salt, and I remember saying, um, I'm all right, I'm fine. And now, what happens, guys, at least when I was playing, I had built up so much currency 
from never getting hurt that when I told them I was fine, they believed me. And I always had another mechanism that, um, that um, really emphasized that I was okay. I would curse at them. <laughs> so I would, if the doctor came to me and said, are you okay? I would say, yeah. <laughs> And so, oh, he, he's, he's okay. That's what they would say because I had, you know, I'd, I mean, I played, you know, I always played and I never got hurt. So when I told them I was okay, they believed me. And uh, what happened was I went to the sidelines um, after getting the smell and salt and standing next to the coach and talking to the, the doctors and stuff like that, convincing them I was fine. They waited a couple plays. And I remember going back in and telling them I'm ready to go back in. And so I went into the huddle, lined up in a proper place, and um, um, heard the play, got in a proper formation, and then all of a sudden when I had to go fast, my head started to spin. I caught the ball, didn't know what happened. And I remember it was early third quarter, and then I go to the sidelines and it faded to black. I became cognizant in the fourth quarter so there's a whole quarter that was just all blackness to me, mm. right? And then I asked the same question, what was I doing on the sidelines? And they said, all you were doing was laughing, <laughs> which is like, I mean, weird. I don't, I didn't, you know. <laughs> but um, it is serious. Then I knew it was serious, then, uh, if, if that can happen and stuff like that. And we didn't have our you know, concussion protocol. It was honestly two fingers, all right? What year is it? I know what year it is, God damn it. That's what I would say, you know? So, um, but now things are different. They, they take your helmet away immediately, and then you obviously have to go through concussion protocol, and they evaluate you throughout, uh, at least for the week and stuff. And so uh, they're trying to do everything possible because um, it's a great game, and you don't want to see guys get hurt. But there are a lot of kids that play soccer mm. that get hurt, and they have just as many concussions playing soccer. So what do you do? Do you lock your kids in a closet and, 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 and don't go out and play? I mean, so it's, it's a decision that you have to make individually um, as a parent and as a player if that's what you want to do. I decided I want to, so. it's a great answer. Well, thank you so much for being here. And one more hand for guys. Marcus Allen, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Every kiss Tweet those theme songs at Kay. Okay. <laughs> so Let's get them up to 50,000. I can't believe it's true. I'm standing here in front of you and you are here with me. I see. I'm, I'm surprised with you, huh? So unbelievable. All right, wait. Look, I need you guys. Uh, can we keep the cameras rolling? I need you guys to come up here behind me, and I want everybody to do this with me, okay? All right? Please? Get up and go. All right, this is important, guys, because this is, uh, this is my last one for today, and I need you guys. And what I'm going to do is, guys, uh, can you guys harmonize, or do we have to just sing in unison? All right, can, can I get the girls, can I get the sopranos over here? <laughs> and the altos and the first tenors and the basses. Can I get, huh? Huh? Everything every, yeah, every kiss begins, yeah. Yeah, that's okay. Hey, don't showcase them in public. All right. All right. Oh, yeah, honey, let me tell you, you want to you 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 take over? Hey, somebody, hey, listen here, I need Kim. Oh, you're gonna, you're gonna take a camera? I need somebody to give us a one, a two, and a three, right? Because we don't wanna. I'll do I, that. I wanna rehearse. I'll do that. Guys, you guys know what the, 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 the jingle is, right? Right, what is it? No, I don't want you to say it though. Somebody sing it to me, come on. Come on, somebody sing it real quick. Every kiss begins with K. Thank you, darling. Every kiss begins with K. All right, oh, you like, see, you didn't think I could sing, did you? All right, you guys ready? Okay, Ray. Wait, all right, Kim. Every kiss begins with K. Oh, I love you guys. You guys are good. Thank you Marcus guys very Allen. much.